Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is improvise. Let's take a moment to look at some of the definitions or the ways that we use this verb. The first way you might hear improvise used is to mean to create and perform art spontaneously or without preparation. That's a really part, a big part of this verb, that without preparation. Now, you can see because sometimes I make mistakes as I'm speaking, but for the most part, these videos are not improvised, right? I'm not making things up spontaneously. I have made notes. I've made example sentences. So uh, these videos in some ways are kind of the opposite of, of this uh, particular verb. We hear improvise uh, used quite often with certain styles of music. So this is where someone has not written and thought about and tried and practiced a particular song. They just get in front of people and start making music. A second way you might hear improvised used is to mean to make, invent, or arrange offhand. Okay. And we're going to connect that second definition to the third one here, which is to produce or make something from whatever is available. So uh, with these uh, second and third definitions, um, I, I'm going to go back to that phrase without preparation. Right? So you might think of doing things, making something up, inventing something, producing something without a specific plan. Right? Um, and so kind of you, many times when we think of this verb, we're thinking of uh, thinking on our feet, creating something uh, without that preparation or planning. Now, you should know the verb improvise is a regular verb. To make the progressive form of this verb, I'm going to drop the E before I add ING to form improvising. The past tense and participle forms of this verb can be made by just adding the letter D, since this verb already ends in an E. Our base verb, improvise, ends in a voiced sound. It's a, a Z sound. This means that our ED ending is just going to make a D sound. And I'm not going to add an extra syllable as I say it. So it should sound like this. Improvised. Improvised. Okay. There is one phrasal verb that you might encounter, and that is to improvise on. Um, and our definition or our meaning here is to take something that already exists and use that to make something new or and or different. Let's take a look at uh, an example sentence here. The students improvised on Twinkle Twinkle Little Star to make new lullabies. Now, you might not be familiar with this song, and that's okay, but this is a pretty popular, well-known song. And this sentence is saying they started, maybe with the music for this particular uh, song, and then they were asked to take that and make something new with it. Okay. Now, let's move on and use our verb of the day, improvise, in a, a couple different verb tenses. Today, we're going to practice the, the present progressive and the simple future with will. Let's start with the present progressive. We use this verb tense to describe actions that are happening now. We also use it to describe actions that um, are in progress during a time period that is not yet complete. Okay. The reason I always call this present progressive, but you might hear present continuous or uh, in, in a book or maybe in other YouTube videos, and th those that term is absolutely fine. But I like saying present progressive because I like to help us remember we need two parts to make our verb. So you can see the two letter P's there in present and progressive. So we're going to need two parts to our verb here. Um, when I make present progressive sentences, I have to pay attention to my subject. So if my subject is I, 
The first part of my verb is am, and then the second part is a verb with an ing ending. If my subject is you, we, or they, I use are, A-R-E, and then the ing form of the verb. Finally, if my subject is he, she, or it, I'm going to use is, and then the ing form of my verb. Let's take a look at an example sentence. The orchestra is improvising while its theater is under construction. So uh, here it might be they're kind of coming up with new ideas or new places to hold concerts because they can't hold it in their sort of normal place. Now, let's talk about making negative present progressive sentences to do this. Again, I start with a subject. Depending on what that subject is, I'm going to use am, are, or is. Then you're going to see not, and then the ing form of the verb. Here's another example sentence. I'm not improvising with these sample sentences, right? I'm not making them up off the top of my head. You can see I've, I've written them down before I started making this video. Now let's look at making a yes or no question in the present progressive. To do this, I start with a present form of be. So that's am, is, are. Then I'm gonna use my subject, whichever I, and my be form of be has to match my subject. Then I'm gonna use the ing form of the verb. Here is my last present progressive example. Are you improvising with what you have? Are you, uh, sometimes this might be making, making something up from other things that are around. You might not have exactly what you need, but you, you might be able to uh, think of a way around it. Now let's move on and talk about the simple future. Today we're going to make sentences with will. Will is commonly used to make promises and predictions in the simple future. It's a little less common to hear it with plans, but some people will still use it that way. You'll hear it with promises as well. And the nice thing about making sentences in the simple future with will is that our structure is going to stay the same no matter what our subject is. So in our affirmative or positive sentences, we're going to have our subject, we're going to use will, and then the base verb. So we don't add any special endings to the verb. An example of this might be, the actors will improvise a new musical each night. This means they're going to make up something new. So each show will be a little bit different. Now, Let's talk about making negative simple future sentences. To do this, again, I start with a subject. I use will not and then the base verb. You might see and hear the contraction for will not. That's won't. You can see it in my example here. This musician uh, won't improvise during the concert. It's like not something this person does. Finally, let's look at making a yes or no question in the simple future. To do this, I start with will, then I have my subject, and then the base verb. An example of this, will you improvise bedtime stories for your kids? Right? Some people are, are so creative and, and really good of kind of making something up without planning and thinking about it. Um, so who knows, maybe, maybe you're a person who likes to improvise. Now, let's spend a little time looking at some words that are related to our verb improvise. And the first word we're going to look at today is the noun improvis improvisation. Sorry, improvisation. This is the act of improvising, or it might describe something that has been improvised. An example of this might be, the director stopped the actor's improvisation during the scene. Okay. So um, in many TV shows and movies, there, there is a written script. Many people have probably worked on and thought about what is this character saying? Then is what's that one going to say in response? But sometimes the actors will make up their own words, right? But here we're saying the director stopped it. They, they didn't want uh, things to be made up at that particular moment. 
Another related word you might see is the noun improviser. That er suffix is going to tell us this is a person who improvises. An example of this might be there is a lot we can learn from jazz improvisers. That's a, a form of music that's that's really known for kind of creating and making things up without planning and rehearsing it. Another related word you might hear or see is the adjective improvisational. This is describing something that relates to or is characterized by spontaneous performance. That word spontaneous might be new for you. Think of that as unplanned, something that is not planned. An example of this adjective in a sentence might be, do you enjoy improvisational comedy shows? This is really popular in uh, certain large cities where people will go and watch certain performers make things up um, and attempt to be very funny while doing it. One last word for us today, it's the noun, and it's a kind of a shortened form from improvisation. It's the noun improv. This specifically refers to a form of live theater. Um, and, and this is where uh, the storyline, the plot, what's going to happen, the characters, and then the dialogue, the words the characters are saying to each other is completely made up in the moment. So this is not practiced and rehearsed again and again. So essentially, every show is different. An example of this might be Second City in Chicago is famous for its improv. Okay? That would be an example of one of those improvisational comedy shows. Um, and, and this is certainly one of the most, if not the most, famous place for improv. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you have a great day.